Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Bear Bar Tales. It is I, the one bear that went to the metaverse and stole your heart, the phantom thief known simply as the Bear Bard. Last week, we ganged up a bit on DMs, and you know, they really do a ton of work and have a tough job. So this week, we have a horror story from the other side of the table. First, if you like this kind of content and you want to hear more Bear Bar Tales, make sure to give this video a like and try to steal that sub button's heart. Every sub I get gets me one step closer to starting my acting career. Then I can star in the Firefly reboot I'll make, coming soon to Disney+. Without further ado, a mom tried to manipulate me into DMing. <laughs> I love that title. It's like, I just get this image of Stifler's mom. You boys wanna DM for me? <laughs> I, I know it's funnier to me than it is to you. Since my last story gained so much attention, I decided to share another one of my LGS horror stories here. The characters, the mom, wizard, her best friend, fighter, her son, and yours truly. Preface, I am not making fun of fighter. He's just a little kid and he can't help the way he was raised. I can, however, make fun of the adults in the story since they fully deserve it for acting like kids. If you haven't read my last story, you should know that before the pandemic hit, I used to DM at an LGS. The owner is a really good friend of mine. Don't get me wrong, I had a ton of fun playing there and I met a ton of people that I'm still friends with to this day. But I also had a few bad encounters. This is one of them. So six months after I started DMing, I decided on running Ghosts of Saltmarsh at the store. The owner's wife approached me one day and told me that a 13-year-old kid wanted to play D&D. But along with the kid also came his mom. She was just there to see if it wouldn't be too violent for the little guy. The kid henceforth shall be known as the fighter, since that was his preferred class. First red flag here. Look, at 13, yes, you're a kid, but you're old enough to play some D&D without mommy there over your shoulder. Parents like this have no idea the harm they're doing to their child by hovering like this. I get wanting to make sure that your son is safe, but you destroy their growth by going about it like this. If this kid hasn't had the chance to stretch himself and his mom is always right there, then it doesn't bode well for his behaviors in this story and in all aspects of his life. Well, let's just say the violence didn't come from my end. We played the first adventure of Saltmarsh. Fighter ran around the place trying to decapitate a lot of the NPCs in the dungeon. He also tried to torture one for information. All the while, his mom sat next to him, not wanting to play at the table even though I invited her to. Then, when people got visibly uncomfortable, she proclaimed to the group, Let the boy have his fun. No, I need to be here in case it gets too violent for my baby. I'm gonna kill everything. The session ended and I had to cancel the next one due to a family emergency. And since 90% of my regular players were on vacation during the time of my return, I decided to do a beginner's event where we played Lost Mine of Fendelver. A few weeks passed and the event rolls around. If you wanted to take part in the event, you had to write your name on a sheet in the store. On the day of the event, Fighter and his mom appear. They wanted to play in the campaign. At that point, all of the spots in the campaign were taken. I politely told them that they still have a place in my Salt Marsh campaign and can return next week. Fighter and his mom started crying and I felt insanely uncomfortable, so I let them play. This is where I also find out that one of the players of the event, Wizard, is actually mom's best friend. The other weird coincidence was that one of my Salt Marsh players lived directly above the mom. So we sat around the table with eight players. I hadn't prepared any more character sheets, so two characters were played by two people each. And again, the fighter was a complete edgelord. He was playing a lawful good character, by the way. He started cutting off all the goblins' ears, but it got a little better after I took him aside and explained roleplay to him. He was still a loot whore, though. Even though it was kind of chaotic, it was still fun. So I decided to finish LMOP on my own time with this group. Two players dropped out after session one, so it all worked out. We played two more sessions. I offered to create a character for the mom, but she declined. She said she just wanted to sit, listen, and take notes for the group. But since this was during the time I was still in college, I always had a bunch of term papers due at the end of each semester. At around this time, I always told the owner that I'll put all D&D stuff on hold. So September rolls around and I tell everyone in the store's discord that I will be taking September off. Without even batting an eye, the mom went upstairs to my salt marsh player and told him that I refused to DM anymore and asked him if he could DM the module for the group. I only found out about it because my player jokingly texted me about it. At this point, I was fuming. I got into a huge fight with the mom about it. 
she apologized after a while, and since I was a big softie back then, I forgave her. Everything went without a hitch until we finished the campaign. The group had a lot of fun playing with me, so they asked if I wanted to DM another campaign for them, which I agreed. We decided on starting with Dragon of Icebire Peak and would go into Storm King's Thunder. Big mistake here. Clearly this woman is manipulative as hell. In just the first little bit, she yelled at people for not being okay with her little psycho, cried to get him into a game she didn't sign up for, and tried to move on with the campaign without him just because she didn't feel like waiting. There's a lot of quote, red flag behavior that can be worked with and helped. But manipulation is not one of them. Just run. This is where the next part of trouble began. Since we finished LMOP a week before Christmas, we planned on a get together for the group, a little bit like a Christmas party. This was also during the week my dad came for a visit. He lives on the other side of the country, so I barely get to see him. We all agreed to hang out at a bar to have a few. I told them I would bring my dad along since he doesn't get out much. Every last member of the group canceled, but not by themselves. Apparently, they all called the mom to cancel, and not me whose idea this whole thing was. This was meant to take place on Saturday since Sunday I would take a car ride with my dad to be home for Christmas. The mom used the group chat to organize a separate meeting on Monday, knowing full well I was not in town. It might sound petty now, but remember this for later. Okay, that really stung, but I chalked it up to coincidence. Where it all went downhill was the session zero for the next campaign. The mom's best friend, Wizard, was still a part of the group. He tried to power game and send me builds upon builds for his next character, telling me how awesome they were. Then, after a long back and forth, he decided to play a bard. A changeling bard. In the Forgotten Realm setting. Also, he wanted his starting equipment to be a double scimitar, bladed quarterstaff, and mithril armor. After that, I got so annoyed that I told him to use stuff from the player's handbook only or get lost. Time for session zero. Usually, I only use standard array for character creation, and this was definitely one of the reasons why I still do that. But since this was a home campaign, I told the players they could either come into the store on Wednesday before my campaign, or wait till session zero to roll their stats. And it worked out for four of the six players. Again, Wizard was insanely annoying. He tried to record a video of himself rolling out his stats and sending it to me via Discord. I told him to wait till session zero. The fighter was the other one who couldn't wait. He just rolled his stats anyway. And what a quinkadink, he had three 18s. I told him he couldn't use them since I wasn't there when they were rolled. The mom was like, but I was around when they were rolled. That should be enough. I let the fighter roll new stats, which still had two 17s and no stat under 14 in it. Fighter got pissed, slammed the door and cried his eyes out. The mom looked at me like I was the villain. Remember what I said about hurting her son's development? There is no reason for a 13 year old to be out here acting a damn fool like that. Maybe that sounds harsh, but I coach and have worked with kids around this age for over a decade. Can they be immature punks? Absolutely. But at no point should they get this worked up over anything in a game like this, especially when the results are actually pretty damn good. Now, am I under the impression that this kid was actually out here ugly crying? No, probably not. But pretty much any negative reaction is an overreaction at this point, much less getting to the point where someone is calling it crying. During this awkward situation, I also let slip that Wizard wanted to play a changeling. After the session, he sent me a passive-aggressive text on WhatsApp stating, I hope no one heard that. That was supposed to be a secret. I wanted to play a new race every session. I decided I had enough after that and sent out all my grievances to the group in the form of a voicemail, which included the story about trying to get my player to DM, the Christmas story, and the session zero fiasco. Then the mom texted me. We agreed on meeting up at a bar to talk it out. She told me she was flabbergasted about my voicemail. She insisted that she was only trying to recruit my player because I said I refused to DM for them anymore, which I told her was not true. She insisted that this is what I had wrote on the Discord. I pulled out my phone and proved her wrong. Her response was just, oh. Then I confronted her about the Christmas story. Her justification, after work, she just wanted to get a good buzz going. And she told me I shouldn't be mad because maybe we in the group are not as good of friends as you thought we were. This was the moment where I should have thrown my drink in her face, to be honest. 
This was also the time for term papers again. So no matter what I did, I had to take a D&D break. So when the mom asked me if I wanted to return, she said that I should do it right now or not at all. Because if you don't, you will ruin relationships with people that care deeply about you. She also told me I embarrassed Fighter in my voicemail and I should apologize to him. I'll take garbage people for 500. <laughs> Oy vey, I mean, the convo just feels like a train wreck. First, trying to lie about something that can easily be disproven. Then you tell the OP that their friends aren't really their friends. But if you don't keep DMing for them, then you're going to ruin relationships with people that love you. One of these things just doesn't belong here. At least pick one manipulative tactic and stick with it, not two that directly conflict. After that, I decided to not return at all. Then she tried to pull up my heartstrings. I didn't get a play at all, and now I have to DM? Funny, coming from someone who got offered to play in the last campaign and refused. I also told her that if Wizard is so obsessive with the game, he should DM. Her answer? Not gonna happen. Decided to leave it at that and left. They tried to run the essentials kit without me. I left the group chat the same weekend. A few weeks later, she came into the LGS with Fighter. He looked me dead in the eyes and tried to give me the stink eye. Mom went up to me, rudely interrupting a conversation I had with a friend. I was really pissed off at that and barely acknowledged her existence. After she left the store, she texted me on WhatsApp saying I was being rude and shitty and that if I had a problem with her, I should just leave the group chat. And then she realized I had already done so. She then deleted the entire message. A few weeks later, COVID started. She came into the store and complained how hard DMing was, and apparently after two or three sessions, the group disbanded. That is where the story of the mom ends. Wizard was still in my store campaign. Since again, this was during term paper time, the entire thing was still put on hold. But I still ran Descent into Avernus since that was a pretty railroady campaign and easy to prepare for. So Wizard texted in the group chat why I was still running the DIA campaign. I told him my reason, to which he replied, You can just tell me if you don't want to play with me anymore. That was partly true. The day after that, he went bananas and sent this message in the group chat of the campaign. Since I'm now groupless, I'm looking for a spot as a player. Does any one of you have an opening? I decided to block him and the mom. Wizard actually managed to find a group afterwards, weirdly enough, in a campaign ran by Power Gamer from the last story, but he got kicked out for hitting on Power Gamer's girlfriend. Wizard is married, by the way. So that was my second LGS horror story. I hope you cringed a bit. Well, there we go. One of the absolute last people you'd ever want in one of your games. I genuinely don't get how people can get this way in their lives. If they act this bad in a freaking hobby, can you imagine what they're like with something that matters? I know I've said it a few times now, but the pure manipulation is just insane to me. She even jumps all over the place. When one tactic doesn't work, she just switches gears and tries a different one. It reminds me of that scene in Brooklyn Nine-Nine when Teddy keeps trying to win Amy back and he just goes, did that tactic work on you? DMs, please don't put yourself through this. You put in far too much work to also have to deal with this type of behavior. Just cut them off and get out of there. Then, who would have guessed that this delightful human spawned a demon child? Yes, he's a kid, but by 13, there really is no excuse for this behavior. I feel bad for the kid. It's all he knows. I just hope that at some point in his life, he figures out that the way he's been shown is not the way you do things. We are products of our environment, but we are not limited by them. It may not be easy, but he can still end up not being a POS. Not really sure what else to say here. It's the risk when dealing with people you don't know. It sucks, she's trash, sounds like Wizard is also a douche, but at least you got an entertaining story out of it. Hopefully OP, you're in a much better gaming situation now. For now though, let's go ahead and get to this week's bear fact. The largest mammalian carnivore that ever lived on land was the giant short-faced bear. Twice the size of the biggest modern bear. It was 6 foot 5 inches tall at the shoulder when standing on all fours. Scientists believe it had very long legs and chased antelope in the North American prairies. It died around 12,000 years ago. It was estimated that it could run over 40 miles an hour despite weighing over 1,500 pounds. <laughs> I mean, look at this thing. That would be absolutely terrifying to see running up on you with those long ass legs. But you gotta show respect to the ancestors. But I think that's gonna do it for me today. 
I want to thank you all for the continued support. It means a ton to me seeing people get invested in this channel. With that said, if you like this video, then make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to connect with me outside of YouTube, you connect with me on Discord, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. On Discord, we're actually getting a pretty cool little community put together, and I'd love to see more people join it. You can also check out the Bear Bar Tales podcast if that's your sort of thing. I have more episodes planned and in the works that I think you're going to love. For now though, this has been the Bear Bard. Stay kind, stay beautiful, and keep on living that bard life.